A topic that I think is really concerning and in danger of perhaps being overlooked. As we have, I don't know, the anti-vax nutters going on about people dying when they aren't and, and undertakers making all sorts of weird claims. There are some people who have suffered through the measures of COVID and one of them is our, our youngest and most vulnerable students at school. Students who are the future of this country. New Zealand principals expect the disruption to Kiwi students' learning caused by the pandemic will take years to correct. Um, and this is quoting from an RNZ story. Impacts such as increased truancy and more abuse online have followed on from literally years of disruption to normal schooling schedules. One principal uh, says his school, in his school, it would be rare to find any student performing at the same level they would have been had the pandemic not occurred. And that's a real that's a real problem. And so to get some extra insight into this and what we might need to do to correct it, um, we're joined by our friend from the Titai Tokarao Principals Association, um, Pat Newman, who uh, joins us by uh, video link. Pat, how are you? Nice to see you. Well, Nina, Sean, oh, I'm well and alive. This All is right. a great way to be in the <laughs> Do you disagree with this rather pessimistic report um, that RNZ are talking about that really every kid at school in the country has in some way suffered as a result of what we had to do to get through the pandemic? Look, Sean, anyone that disagrees with that statement is a fool and doesn't know what they're talking about. Of course it's true. All right, so what are, are some of those impacts that you're seeing and, and that teachers are seeing? We're seeing a whole heap. I, I can say, for instance, in, in my own school, and it wouldn't be unusual, and we're a primary school, that last year our year six reading was lower than it's ever been. Wow. Um, and that reflects through. Um, you can't have the level of in social disruption, the level of um, not knowing what's happening, um, the fear of catching things, the fear of not catching things, all of those things that have, were in the pot last year and the year before, um, of course they've impacted on kids, and in particular, not only from the young ones, but right through. Um, we have this belief that homeschooling during COVID would um, keep everything fine, but it didn't, and it couldn't, and we knew that. But what we were doing was trying to hold the, um, I suppose, hold the tide back. Mm. Um, and keeping things in place. But, yeah, th th on top of that, John, we're dealing with massive um, social disruption caused by it, housing disruption, kids going through one, two, three, four, five different houses, different schools in a year. All of those sort of things are happening. And above that, particularly as they get older, there's that feeling of whakamā, that feeling of... Um, I'm behind. I'm going to look silly in front of my kid. Of and my boy, and once you get into that mindset and time zone, as a uh, sort of thought zone, as a young person, that's a hardship to turn around, isn't it? Ah, uh, particularly when you're starting to talk teenage and getting mm. on further, which is around your NCA times, it's damned hard. Yeah. Look, it and, strikes and me. Yeah, it strikes me also if we look at put school aside for a moment and we look at wider or more general society, I think that has also left a rather damaging legacy, COVID has. Um, I think we now have issues abroad in our society and a polarisation of views and things happening which are most concerning to me as a New Zealander. And we are somehow, it seems to me, a less cohesive society than we were three years ago, uh, less able to... I don't know, discuss our differences in a reasonable manner. And I'm wondering if that is feeding through to the attitudes in the schoolyard and in the classroom. If, unfortunately, our young people are reflecting the apparent division that is becoming more pronounced in wider society. Um, I think you summed it up very nicely. My goodness me, I agree with you totally. Um, it is being reflected. Kids um, are at home, and particularly, it doesn't matter what age they are, um, they're hearing their parents, they're hearing their parents' friends, they're talking to their friends, 
they're the ones that are having to say, heck, where are we sleeping tonight? Because we've got, um, you know, we're shifting house again. We're in emergency housing. Not saying it's just those children, but I think the whole of society at the moment is not cohesive, as you said. We've forgotten um, a lot of the basics of being fair and kind to each other. And I know that might sound woke to you. I oh, know it doesn't. I, I disagree. We've now, I agree with you completely. We now have a government that's putting out pamphlets on how to spy on your friends and family. Of course, we're, we're less unified than we used to be. I, I agree with you completely, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Yeah, well, I haven't seen the pamphlets. It'll be interesting. But yeah. the kids kids are reflecting. Schools are, are not islands, you mm. know, separate from communities. We, we, we reflect. We get the blame for everything, but we reflect what's going on. And I, I sit there and think, the future for a lot of these kids is going to be damned hard. Mm. Uh, we know that there are numbers of children, particularly within the high school area, that haven't come back over the country. We know that there's a, a big drop-off on enrolments mm. overall right throughout the country. I think the figure's about 10,000 kids. Don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty certain mm. it is, um, that have, are no longer enrolled. The role, For the first time in years, the numbers enrolled in schools have dropped by that, about that, that, that amount. Mm. Um, and those kids have got to be out there. Some may be in work, but I don't think 10,000 of them have picked up jobs. Yeah. How m m might we, apart from in general terms, working on a as adults, improving our wider society and trying to get our IT together, how might we, over the next few years, address some of these longer-term issues or, or, or the shadow of COVID um, in our, you know, education sector? What would be your ideas? Well, to start off with, I don't think it should be all central government because I don't think the way the top-down approach works. Um, there will be need for help and funding from central government. But I actually, we, we've had a very successful campaign up here in Te Taitokarau where we went back to that old thing that it uh, takes a whole community to, to raise a child. And we've had a very successful campaign around it, which is very, very simple stuff. It's looking and saying to your own family, to your own whanau, how can I help you? How can I help you get your kids to school? How can I help there? It's the neighbours saying the same thing. Listen, how can I help you to get your kids to school? Well, how can I do this? It's community. It's the agencies for once working together. Um, that would be the biggest miracle in the sun, in, in the world if we could get Oranga Tamariki to actually work with anybody. Yeah. Um, but I think it's more communities, and I know it sounds simplistic, but it is. It's changing that perspective, in my view, that how do we help um, these kids, these students, to get back into school and to, and to learn. Yeah. And, of course, the government stuff is around housing, social stuff, all right. Yeah, and we know that those things aren't exactly going gangbusters at the moment. Look, I've got a text here. I'm going to address it, um, and I'd ask you to address it uh, uh, for us. Someone says, what is Fakama? Why are we throwing Maori words into an English conversation? Well, we were just chatting. Can you explain to this person what Fakama is? We'll help them out. I feel I'm quite sad that the person doesn't know what Fokamara well, means. Well, you know, so it, it is, you know. Not, and I suspect that they, they might have a different political view and, and, and that, that to me, Fokamara is quite simply, it means feeling bad. And I hope that person now feels Fokamara. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad comeback, i got to say. Hey, look, thanks for joining us um, on this morning, Pat. I think this is a serious issue and it is going to be ongoing. Um, and it's going to take more than you and me um, having a korero about it. Oh, that will upset him. Um, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is talking. That's talking. It will take more than you and me talking to solve this problem, which I think is in danger of going under the radar, but must not because this is really important stuff. Uh, Pat, have a great day. Thank you very much indeed for joining Thank us. You. Ka kite anō. That is uh, Pat Newman. He is um, the president of the Te Taitokara. That's up north, uh, Principals Association. And I'd love to hear from you later in the program when we get um, when we we've got some time for talkback and for calls. Uh, if you're a parent 
have your kids found it tough? Um, and if you've got school-age kids, I really want to know what the impacts have been on them at a real level. Are they feeling whakama? And look, you know me, dear texter, I'm not a politically correct... Oh, I'm learning Māori, look at me. Um, but I mean, come on, it's just one word. It's not a bad word. Sean, I, you lost me after Pat was rude to that text message simply asking the meeting of a Te Reo phrase. And OK, maybe he was, but we know what the phrase was. And, and if I guess if we've lost you, then why would I bother reading out your text? Because you're not listening anymore.